Dan Ullman, Mike Buer, Kentucky Oaks qualifying points on the line. Race number 11 at the fairgrounds on Saturday. Let's throw up the field for the grade two. Rachel Alexandra stakes $300,000 is the purse field of seven. You've got two-year-old Philly champion, British Idiom, making her seasonal debut for Brad Cox. She did nothing wrong as a two-year-old Philly, and you always got to trust Brad Cox to have these horses ready off the layoff. Yep, I mean, you do have to lay off to deal with, but she is uh, way the horse to beat here, making her three-year-old debut. But it's not like she's facing a bunch of tomato cans. Finite, the second choice on the morning line, likely to be the second choice at post time. She's coming into this race off a four-race win streak, plus you've got a couple of others as well. Let's see where British Idiom is on the Time Form U.S. pace projector. She is chiclet number six, so we know with her tactical speed, yeah. she can be close to the pace. Not sure it's going to be truly a red bar situation. I know the one, His Glory, the two Ursula had yeah. speed, and they were up on the pace last time out. I think His Glory will make the lead drawing inside of Ursula. They tried chasing last time. It didn't work blinkers on. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. We'll see what Ursula does. She did make the lead when they stretched her out for the first time last time, but that was not a fast pace. It was not a fast pace, and I think maybe you could hold that against Ursula and his glory yeah. just a little bit. Let's begin with his glory down towards the inside. I really like the way she won at Churchill Downs three starts back. I know she was controlling kind of a moderate pace, but she really kicked home in the stretch. The sloppy track goldenrod I draw a line through. You look at her two races on wet going. She can't stand up on the surface. Yeah. Last time out was the disappointment because she pressed Ursula, she was in with a chance turning into the stretch, and she just couldn't finish. I like the blinkers on move. I think James Graham is going to send the horse. I think she's going to give an improved performance here. I mean, we'll see. You know, maybe they do get aggressive with her. She makes the lead in this race, um, and it leads to an improved performance. Um, outside of her debut, which didn't come back fast, but I thought was really impressive, I can't say that I like any of her races. I don't like her allowance win three back as much as you do. Um, and other than that, you know, they've tried her in stakes races. She's been no match in any of them. Even the Pocahontas stand where she was second, they just went sort of on the pace together. Her and the, the, the yeah, winner of that it. race, and nobody made up any ground, and she wasn't good enough to win that day. I don't know. I can't get behind the source. The two is Ursula, and Ursula finished ahead of his glory last time out, out sprinting that one to the front, grabbing the inside. Game to finish second to finite, but as Mike mentioned, you know, she did have that pace scenario yeah. go her way. Yeah, they just didn't go fast in that race. She got to that. I liked the ride that she got. They put her on the lead in there. Um, when Finite challenged her, I'll give her credit for being very game in the stretch, but she was ultimately second best in that race. Prior to that, I thought she ran okay. She looks like a filly to me who has some talent. I do wonder how far she wants to go. Swiss Skydiver, the number three, made her stakes debut last time out at Tampa Bay, going seven furlongs in the Gasparilla Stakes. We're going to take a look at that race right now. She is widest turning into the stretch. She's only going to get beat three quarters of a length. You see her on the far outside with sort of that white star on her face. I thought the inside and speed was where you needed to be for most of the day. This horse that's going to win ended up on the lead. She's just drifting out considerably in the stretch. Swiss Skydiver ran pretty well in this race, and I thought she ran well two starts back. Off slow, big mid-move yeah. tired. I think she's ran well in all three of her races. A really impressive debut in a Churchill Downs going seven. I mean, she was strong in that race. Um, the race in the slop in her, her second time out, I thought she ran well that day, even though she blew a clear stretch lead. She had a real trip in the Gasparilla last time and still ran well. I thought there's a, a question of um, whether she'll be effective stretching out around two turns, and there's a real question with whether or not she can get out of the gate this time, because she's been pretty slow from the gate in all three of her starts, but there is something here. She's run well in all three of her starts. And if she doesn't get out of the gate, well, she better hope time for U.S. is yeah. right, and the one sure. and the two go fast early. She's a horse, though, that has some upside. Her uncoupled stable mate is right next to Door. That's impeccable style, who caught a very tough maiden race at Saratoga in her mm -hmm. debut. That Alondra showed tons of potential in that race and winning. Second time out at Churchill Downs, Kenny McPeak just excels when he puts Lasix on oh, the yeah. second time starters, and it really wasn't a surprise when impeccable style won. She's a little bit light on figs, but don't hold it against her. She only ran twice as a two-year-old. Yeah. A couple of bullet workouts at Gulfstream, and I'm really not worried about her stretching out. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about horses with upside in this race. I think she's one of those horses. She ran okay first time out. Um, and just what turned out to be a pretty tough spot, I thought, really took a step forward in her second start, I thought. Bred to stretch out. You mentioned the, the last two workouts, which are nice. It looks like maybe even in company with Swiss Skydiver, so there's something there with this horse, too. Tempers Rising would really benefit from a fast pace. Maybe she didn't get that blazing pace last time out in the Silver Bullet Day. She was only beaten a neck in a blanket finish that day. Let's go back to a race at Keeneland on October the 6th. She finishes second to Blame Debbie, who's okay, and I thought this was a solid enough effort for Tempers Rising, although she was the beaten favorite in this race, and then the beaten favorite in her very next race. Yeah. It looks like she's slowly coming to hand, and the 
Dallas Stewart horses, this is what happens for them. It sometimes takes five or six starts, but this one's going to need some pace. Yeah, she's going to need uh, every bit of the pace that the pace projector suggests is, uh, is coming for her. Um, and then we'll see if she can close it down. Listen, she's run pretty well in all of her races on the board and all of her starts. I thought she was most compromised last yes. time. Um, just going back and watching all of her races, though, she's not like this super strong finisher where you feel like she's gotten unlucky a bunch of times before. She just sort of grinds through the stretch. Here's British Idiom, winner of the Alcibiades, winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. She got a very nice trip in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. They were going fast and furious in front of her. She is on the outside, is going to take over, and she's going to beat a determined Donovan. Veloce and Bast. It was a good effort for British Idiom. All of her efforts have been good. Yeah. She earned an 85 buyer, two starts back. That shows that she can run a fast race. This race was one of those fast, early, slow, yeah. late efforts, but she got through it. Yeah, I mean, I'll give her a little credit for winning that race just because she worked so hard yes. from basically from the first turn where she brushed with Donna Veloce and maybe lost some position and just worked really hard from then on and finally got it done at the end. Or Alcibiades was a really strong performance. She comes back running, Dan, this field's in big trouble. And remember, that was a very testing track at Santa Anita Breeders' Cup. A lot of horses didn't handle it. I wonder if British Idiom actually overcame the track. Maybe she didn't seem to love I it that much. Agree. She was very good and she beat a very good field. And I expect Brad Cox to have her ready. You saw the tactical speed expected on the pace projector. Finite has won three in a row, four in a row. Let's all started with this maiden race of Kentucky Downs on turf of all yeah. places. Finite showed big speed this day. Went gate to wire and after that she won the rags to riches. She won the grade two goldenrod. She won the silver bullet day last time out and her greatest asset is her tactical speed yeah. because I wonder how Ricardo Santana is going to handle this with British Idiom right to her inside. I would actually send and sit and have British Idiom come try to chase me. I, I would come out of there running as well. She doesn't need the lead obviously but if she makes it um, she might be pretty tough to run down in this race. I don't have any knocks on her Dan maybe outside of the fact that in each of her last three wins just got absolutely oh, perfect yeah. trips every time and did what she had to do to win. Maybe it'll be different in here. I do think she has to improve to beat British Idiom if that one comes back running out the layoff. But you know what? Maybe she won't. I think she's one of those horses that has the tactical speed to get those kind of good trips. Yeah. I think she leaves running, sits off the one and the two. British Idiom might find her stride after a few uh, steps out of the gate. Finite might be the first mover into the yeah, speeds turning into the stretch. We'll take a look at our top pick. Well, I'm catching British Idiom off a layoff. We'll see if Finite, that blanket finish in the Silver Bullet Day. I don't really love the Silver Bullet Day as a race. I'm taking one out of it, though, and that was his glory. I just think that the blinkers on is going to give this horse a little bit of focus. Unlike Mike, I like to race three starts back. I'm giving her an excuse to back. Listen, I don't have an excuse for her last race. Right. She's just going to have to improve. But I know she'll be a price in here. Obviously, I'm using the two big ones in any kind of multis. I went 1762. You're taking a shot as well with Swiss Skydiver. Yeah, I'll take a shot with her. Listen, even though British Idiom is off the layoff here, I was found myself wanting to be more against Finite in here. Yep. Just, and just seeing what she does. I'm not going to you know, take a big stand against British Idiom, who I just think is the best horse. But if I try to beat her, or the horse that I will use underneath her is Swiss Skydiver, she should be a price. I think she's run well in all three of her starts. We'll see how British Idiom does. The two-year-old Philly champion of 2019 takes her first step to the Kentucky Oaks in the grade two Rachel Alexandra with an approximate post time on Saturday, 5.05 Central. Best of luck.